Hello, welcome back to the show. It's 420 somewhere. Today we're going to talk about consumption lounges and then one other thing. So West Hollywood is becoming a place that really, really wants to make a name for itself in the marijuana industry. It wants to become the West Coast Amsterdam, um, I think to take their own words. And they have even a name for it that they want to be called the Emerald Village, which to me sounds like somebody who wants their own nickname to be something and they're kind of forcing it on people, but that's what they're going with, Emerald Village. And uh, the, you can tell that this is happening by a few things. One of the first things is that there are more dispensaries in West Hollywood or more planned dispensaries in West Hollywood per capita than anywhere else in the world. For instance, for every dispensary in West Hollywood, there are 5,925 residents. That's way more than somewhere like Los Angeles, which has one dispensary for every 18,000 residents. So it's a huge difference. And dispensaries are just sprouting up everywhere. There are licenses that are out there. There are so many people wanting to get in on the business in West Hollywood. Woody Harrelson is one of them who just opened a spot called The Woods in, uh, in West Hollywood, right on Santa Monica Boulevard. Here's some pictures of it. it looks cool. Uh, one of the other things that's kind of exciting about West Hollywood is that most of these dispensaries opening up are trying to also connect a lounge, uh, a smoking lounge as a part of the dispensary, which would make it a much cooler, more fun hub and less of a private thing and much more out in the open. And this one article in the LA Times is saying that there has been very little pushback in the residents of West Hollywood. I myself am, am basically a resident of West Hollywood and I have no pushback, of course. This is something that, uh, that West Hollywood is becoming or desperately trying to be more and more known for. And it seems like it's working. It seems like at least there's they're drawing a lot of business into the area, especially with this new Woody Harrelson place opening up. So go check out West Hollywood next time you're around Los Angeles. Secondly, we are coming to a very interesting time in the just the history of marijuana for one reason, because places are continually uh, legalizing in the United States. More and more states are legalizing marijuana, whether it's medicinal or or whether it's recreational. That's of course the big thing. The other big thing is that a new generation is becoming is coming to legal age to smoke marijuana and that's Gen Z. Gen Z is uh, the, the years of 1997 to 2012. So it ranges from age 27 to 10 right now. And of course we have now five years of people who are legal and they're able to go to dispensaries and legally purchase marijuana. They're also a very interesting generation for one big reason, which is that they didn't really grow up in the era of having to have a dealer or having to like know a connect somewhere and not being, and if you didn't know a connect, you just would be screwed. You wouldn't have any marijuana for this week or wherever. Now they, they expect that they can go to a dispensary and it's all out in the open and they can just get weed in that, in that way. So this all brings us to uh, 420, which was last month and tomorrow it will be the one month anniversary afterwards. Um, every year of 420, it gets bigger and bigger. And especially now, every year of 420, it's getting bigger and bigger for the Gen Z market. And it's interesting to see what kind of um, patterns they have when they buy marijuana. Here's a chart from Headset that shows that the biggest growth of customers on 420 is coming from Gen Z. And of course that's obvious because more and more of them are getting um, older and so they can actually uh, purchase marijuana now, but it's pretty gigantic. And especially of 2022, it's getting even bigger. And I, I assume next year and the year after and the year after, it's gonna get huge and astronomical and that's gonna be pretty much the biggest market. So then the question is, what are they buying? What kind of habits does Gen Z have when they smoke marijuana? Is it just joints? Is it bowls? Or is it something new? And it seems that it's something new. Here's another chart that shows kind of what purchases they're making and beverages are way at the top there next following edibles. So they have an entirely different philosophy of marijuana. And it seems like they are drawn more towards just something that is pleasant to consume a aka a beverage or uh, just a, a sweet and then later on they feel the effects of that thing as opposed to I mean pre-rolls are third so I don't want to say that that's you know completely out the door but it, the fact that beverages are by far the highest here is very interesting and shows that the beverage market is a very good idea to invest in at this point because 
it's just gonna get more and more and more Gen Z people are going to continue getting older, of course, and they will continue buying beverages and edibles. So if there was any question as to whether or not beverages was just this fad that was happening now and then was gonna fade away and people were gonna go back to pre-rolls or back to flour, I don't think that's the way it's gonna go. I think, I think, the, I think beverages are here to stay. So yeah, I find that very fascinating. Uh, and that's the two stories that we have today. We'll be back next Tuesday with uh, some more stories. I'll see you then. Hmm. <clears throat>